Aditi Nayar, senior economist at ICRA, joins us uh, to discuss the implications of the Seventh Pay Commission. Aditi, thank you so much. Have you uh, been? A, have you, uh, as an institution, worked out the impact it's going to have both as a GDP multiplier and on inflation? See, broadly, um, our expectation is that we are going to see a good size boost to mid or uh, ticket sized uh, consumption uh, items, whether it's on the manufactured uh, product size or on uh, the services side. And also, uh, you know, to some extent, there will be a higher demand uh, for food items as well. So overall, uh, definitely a positive in terms of the consumption uh, led boost that it would give uh, to GDP growth and uh, really complement uh, the impact that we are expecting. Uh, from the monsoon for the rural sector. So although the uh, start has been somewhat shaky, I mean, it's not been a, uh, you know, a very uh, uh, well uh, spread out uh, start uh, to the monsoon season in this first month. But uh, broad uh, expectations are that uh, there would be a pickup in uh, the volume of rainfall over the next three months. And uh, definitely that would uh, uh, lead to a much uh, more... Uh, uh, improved situation than what we've had in the last couple of years as far as uh, the groundwater levels and reservoir levels are concerned. And it should support the Kharif and also... Stick to the 7th Pay Commission here. Uh, in terms of the total payout that the government has to do, 50,000 crore of course has been uh, uh, already provisioned for. Another additional 50,000 crore is estimated is going to be provisioned for. Uh, we're still waiting for the details, the fine print to come out. That's uh, approximately about 0.6% of uh, our GDP at current prices. Now, is there any estimate that you've done that what is the multiplier that's going to happen in terms of GDP growth? So specifically in terms of uh, the GVA growth, uh, we have uh, an expectation that uh, all these factors put together will bump up GDP uh, GVA growth by 50 basis points from the level that we had in FY16 to the 7.7% that we're expecting in FY17. Now, there will, of course, be an impact on uh, inflation as well, particularly uh, on the services side, uh, because, uh, you know, these are uh, non-tradable and the supply constraints are going to be uh, much more binding on the services side uh, than they would be on the manufactured you products. Examples side. to our viewers, what, what you mean when you talk about services, uh, how does a slightly higher amount of money in the hands of government servants affect that? So first of all, the direct impact uh, would be on uh, the housing uh, sub-index of uh, the CPI because the HRA component uh, for uh, central government employees is going to be impacted. And that does factor into the overall uh, housing uh, calculation that is done for uh, the CPI. So first of all, that would be the direct impact. Other than that, uh, you know, all uh, services that are consumed are consumed across the board, uh, whether it's uh, by a regular household or by... Uh, central government employees and pensioners. So, you know, even things uh, like uh, uh, education, for example, we could see that uh, to some extent school fees start to be uh, revised up in different areas. So that's just one example, you know. Even uh, things like uh, uh, eating out perhaps uh, would go up and, uh, you know, so many other uh, items uh, would also see an increase in uh, consumption. And at the end of the day, these are non-tradables. You can't just import them the way that you could uh, with manufactured products and take advantage of the fact that uh, globally uh, prices are soft for a number of uh, commodities. Uh, so we do think that there would be some impact uh, on uh, the CPI uh, trajectory. It's difficult at this point to quantify, quantify exactly what it would be. Okay, one final question. Uh, there are two aspects to it. You said that inflation impact and the second is government borrowing. Now, both of these should uh, put an upward pressure on interest rates. See, as you said earlier, we do think that a fair bit of uh, the pay commission uh, uh, payout is already provisioned in the budget estimates for 2016-17. Uh, but there would be some amount uh, perhaps that uh, the government would need to provide for in supplementary uh, budget, so uh, some upward pressure. It's really going to depend on how the revenue scenario uh, turns out uh, for the rest of the year. Are the disinvestment targets uh, achieved? Uh, you know, even on the non-tax revenue side, uh, the spectrum auctions, do they really lead to the kind of windfall uh, that has uh, been budgeted? Tax revenues, again, would be very important uh, to watch. It's really early days to be able to get a trend for the rest of the year. Uh, usually the first quarter numbers uh, aren't really a very good indicator of how things are going to uh, pan out in the rest of the year because of uh, the adjustments so that would be there. wait and watch then. Aditi Nayar, thank you so much. Senior economist Eric Rudd joining us.